I'll be honest, I'm only shooting a video on chaos so I have an excuse to wear this shirt. I bought this about two years ago. And I always thought I'd have a live event that I could wear it on stage, but I never did find one that was suitable and here I am. Ha <laughs> ha! Sorry if I'm hurting your eyes. So today I want to talk about chaos. I've become fascinated by the year that we're having, let's face it, is a word that sums up 2020 quite well. It's been quite chaotic. Um, chaos has a very negative connotation, certainly in the English language. You know, if you look up synonyms for chaos, uh, it'll all be things like anarchy and disorder and, and bedlam, all very negative confusion. You know, words that, that don't have positive meaning. And I think if you look at where the word chaos comes from, chaos actually spelt with a K, was a Greek primordial god, one of the first gods. She even existed before heaven and earth. Uh, she was there before everything. Chaos and out of chaos it comes, comes some kind of order and outcome. Uh, and in, in Greek mythology, that chaos word comes from the Greek word chaos, which stands for gap, gap or space. So it's kind of, it's the white space from which something comes from. And chaos is really interesting. So I mean, if you look at all the business models and pivots and things that are happening in the last nine months from a business point of view, of course, businesses are changing the way they work because of the chaos they find themselves in. So chaos isn't necessarily a, a, a negative thing. Chaos can be quite a positive thing. And so interest in this idea, because if you look at what the opposite of chaos is, it's order and systems and rules and process. And they're all very good things maybe to get you to a certain place sometimes. But they're, of course, they're the enemy of creativity and innovation. And so if we're going to build innovative companies and businesses and, and cope with chaos, because this is the, one of the biggest questions I'm asked at the moment, how do you cope with, with a year like this year? How do you cope with chaos? And the chaos, of course, will keep coming over the next decade and it will always be disruptive. So we just don't know what, will, what the kind of disruption will be. This year, of course, it's a medical disruption causing social disruption, causing economic disruption, but there will always be disruption. So how do you prepare a business to cope with chaos? I think the answer is very simple. You fight fire with fire. We have to embrace chaos as a, as a positive thing. You're not looking at unpredictability and, and the unexpected as something bad, but actually encouraging the unpredictable and the unexpected in your organization. Look at Steve Jobs. When he uh, redeveloped the Apple headquarters, on purpose, he made the corridors really narrow. So when people were walking up and down the corridors, they had to meet each other and had to spend time with each other. And that forced departments to meet other departments that maybe wouldn't have happened. And, and therefore, you're getting the unexpected meeting, the unexpected conversation, and that feeds into maybe some kind of product design conversation. And so that's what we need to encourage in our organizations, in our business, in our personal lives, even a little bit of chaos. And so chaos theory, I became interested in chaos theory. Chaos theory is a mathematical theory that states that even though things look unrelated and look like they're in disorder, underneath it all is some kind of some sense of order. And the best known effect, I guess, is the butterfly effect. You all know about the butterfly effect. You know, a small butterfly flaps its wings over there in China, and the little whirls of wind that happen because of those, those flaps of wings build and build, and eventually there's a hurricane in the United States. Now, obviously, this year we didn't have a flap of wings of a butterfly, <laughs> we had a flap of wings of a bat. Uh, and that caused huge chaos across the world. So the butterfly theory, the, the core theory here is that small inputs, the smallest of inputs, can have a huge outcomes. And there's no real obvious correlation between them. I mean, that little flapping butterfly doesn't know it's caused the hurricane. And similarly, chaos inside a system doesn't necessarily know, we don't know how that piece of chaos is going to play out and cause a giant outcome, but it will. This is the point, it will. And so you have to understand that if we're trying to cope with change, we have to fight fire with fire. And we have to encourage chaos in our lives, in our businesses, in our structures, in our organizations. Well, how do you do that? Well, Netflix, interestingly, invented a term that's used quite commonly today called chaos engineering. And they invented what they called a chaos monkey. And the chaos monkey went inside their, their data systems and their cloud systems and actively tried to find problems, and actively chewed wires and actively you know, broke down systems. And by putting that in there, it encouraged them to build data systems that could withstand interruption and still obviously develop, deliver the Netflix product. So they were actively undermining their own systems to try and work out what can we do when this happens, when that happens. It's a chaos monkey. Now, I don't like the word chaos monkey because chaos monkey seems quite mischievous and, <laughs> and bold and naughty. I prefer the chaos ninja. And ninjas were always... Uh, stealthy kind of spies. There were external agents always hired in to cause something, usually to, to exterminate someone's life. But in this situation, my, my idea of a chaos ninja is that you go off and you hire people into your organization that are going to play the role of chaos ninja. And they're going to bring a new culture to the organization. One of the problems we really have in our recruitment of talent is that we talk about company culture. We, we interview 10 people and then we look at them all in terms of their skills and we eventually come down to the conversation about who will fit in best to the company culture. 
And that's true of a large bank as it is of a startup. So a large bank might want that startup culture. They might want something quite simple and straightforward uh, and they want to plug that square peg into the square hole. Whereas a startup wants to do the same thing. They want to uh, recruit something relevant to their culture, kind of something maybe quite seamless and frictionless and, and fluid. But they're both wrong because if you only recruit within your company culture, guess what? You get cookie cutter thinking. You get cookie cutter recruitment feeds, the same input, the same output. And that's not going to be your friend when it comes to creativity and innovation and thinking about new ways of coping with new challenges. So we have to actively recruit outside the company culture. And that's where we have to look to new ways of recruiting, new ways of bringing people in that maybe don't share our thinking, but think completely different ways. Creative people, people with a whole different set of skills that we thought that we needed. Because those people will be the chaos ninjas. They will challenge the way of thinking, challenge the way of us doing our business, challenge the way that we thought was the way to succeed. And that's what we need to do. We need to inject actively go out there and put chaos into our systems. Now people will immediately say, well, what is chaos? Okay, I, I agree. Let's tick the box. What's the box? Where, where's the to-do to list of, of injecting chaos into my organization? Now, chaos is quite an ephemeral thing. You can't actually pin it down. Uh, it's like that, that famous Louis Armstrong quote when he was asked, what is jazz? He said, if you have to ask what is jazz, you will never understand it. And so chaos can't be, it can't be just put into a, an eight-step model. It can't be put into a business book. It is what it is. And you have to just actively go out there and try and find chaotic elements in the organization, in the structures, in the recruitment of talent, and try and artificially create some element of chaos in the organization in the hope and the knowing, the knowledge. This is, this is the uh, fundamental of chaos theory, that the small inputs that you change, those chaotic inputs, will have outcomes. You just can't draw a line between them. You don't know what the outcome will be, but it will be something exciting, something different. And that's what we're craving. How do you cope with change and chaos? You inject chaos into the system and you fight fire with fire. How do you end a video about chaos? I guess you could do this. Whoa! just realised I've got to clean all that up now.